right. Mic check. One, two, three. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. It's on. After two years of starting many meetings on mute, I thought I should double check. All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Let's actually make that welcome back. It's so great to be back in Shoreline Amphitheater after three years away. In countries around the world, Google Translate has been a crucial tool for newcomers and residents trying to communicate with one another. Real-time translation is a testament to how knowledge and computing come together to make people's lives better. More people are using Google Translate than ever before, but we still have work to do to make it universally accessible. There is a long tail of languages that are underrepresented on the web today, and translating them is a hard technical problem. That's because translation models are usually trained with bilingual text. For example, the same phrase in both English and Spanish. However, there's not enough publicly available bilingual text for every language. So with advances in machine learning, we have developed a monolingual approach where the model learns to translate a new language without ever seeing a direct translation of it. By collaborating with native speakers and institutions, we found these translations were of sufficient quality to be useful. Today, I'm excited to announce that we are adding 24 new languages to Google Translate. This includes the first indigenous language of the Americas, and together these languages are spoken by more than 300 million people. For more than 15 years, Google Maps has worked to create rich and useful representations of this information to help us navigate. Advances in AI are taking this work to the next level, whether it's expanding our coverage to remote areas, reimagining how to explore the world in more intuitive ways. Around the world, we have mapped around 1.6 billion buildings and over 60 million kilometers of roads today. Some remote and rural areas have previously been difficult to map due to scarcity of high-quality imagery and distinct building types and terrain. To address this, we are using computer vision to detect buildings at scale from satellite images. As a result, we have increased the number of buildings on Google Maps in Africa by five times since July 2020, from 60 million to nearly 300 million. We've gone a step further and made the data set of buildings in Africa publicly available. International organizations like the United Nations and the World Bank are already using it to better understand population density and to provide support and emergency assistance. 